Hey everybody, welcome back. We are again doing conceptual physics and this time we are talking about momentum. Today is a little introduction to what is momentum and some simple example problems of momentum. All right, here we go. So I know we haven't learned anything about momentum, but these are some like pre-questions to just get us warmed up. Okay, as always, pause the video before I give the answer. It's good to think through it. Even if you're getting them wrong, it's a lot better to think through and get it wrong and understand why you got it wrong than to just see me do everything. All right, so what would be harder to stop? A, a two kilogram basketball rolling on the floor at 10 meters per second. B, an eight kilogram bowling ball rolling on the floor at 10 meters per second. C, it would take the same amount of energy to stop both. I think pretty simple. It is a uh, B. If you could, if you could kind of put it into the extreme, if we had like a ping pong ball, really light ping pong ball going 10 meters per second, that's going to be really easy to stop. But if we had like a really heavy boat going 10 meters per second, that's going to be pretty hard to stop. All right, moving on. What would be harder to stop? A, a two kilogram basketball rolling on the floor at 10 meters per second. B, a two kilogram bowling ball rolling on the floor at five meters per second. It would take the same amount of energy to stop. This is a bit more tricky. Um, the answer is going to be A. Um, the reason for that is even though this is lighter, it is going faster. Whoops, faster. And it has more momentum. But how would you know it has momentum? We haven't talked anything about momentum. Well, we're going to be covering that right now. So what is momentum? Momentum is the product of the mass and motion of an object. Momentum is equal to the mass times velocity represented by this lowercase p and this is the main formula right here uh these are the manipulate algebraically manipulated formulas if you want to copy it down or memorize it or if you don't need to because you are good with algebra and the units we primarily use are kilograms times meters per second should be easy enough kilogram because the mass and meters per second because the velocity all right moving on a snowball is rolling down a snowy mountain as the snowball rolls down, it accumulates more and more snow and travels faster and faster. Why is the snowball gaining momentum? A, because the snowball is gaining mass. B, because the snowball is getting faster. C, both A and B. D, none of the above. All right, think about it. Again, pause it. But the answer is C. So remember, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. As it's rolling down, it's accumulating more mass. And as it's going down, it's getting faster and faster. So both A and B. Moving on. What is the momentum of a 1,200 kilogram car moving at 12 meters per second? So momentum is equal to the mass times velocity. So we could pretty much just plug that in. 1,200 times the velocity, 12. Put that into my calculator. And I get 14,400 kilograms times meter per second. Okay, moving on. A 72 kil uh, kilogram skateboarder is trying to reach a momentum of 850 kilogram meters per second. How much, how fast does she need to go in order to do this? Okay, so we know momentum is equal to mass times velocity. However, this time we are looking for how fast. So we're looking for this velocity. So let's manipulate this a little bit. Uh, velocity is equal to Momentum divided by mass. Momentum is 850. The mass is 72. So let's see what velocity is equal to. Uh, 850 divided by 72. And we get 11.81 meters per second. Okay, moving on. A football player with a mass of 92 kilograms is moving at a speed of 15 meters per second until he collides with an opposing player and can only travel at a speed of 2 meters per second in the same direction. How much momentum does the player lose? This is a good question because we're actually going to be talking about collisions a lot in this chapter. So uh, let's do this. So let's see. Well, let's find what the momentum they had initially. So initially, the mass of the football player was 92 kilograms, and the velocity or the speed was 15 meters per second. So initially, there was 92 times 15, which is 13, oops, 1380 
kilograms times meter per second. But then after the collision, um, the football player still has 92 kilograms, but is only going 2 meters per second. Put that in. I should be able to do that without a calculator. 184 kilograms times meter per second. Now the question is, how much momentum did the football player lose? So I could just subtract these two. Uh, 1380 minus 8, 184. And we get 1196 kilograms times meter per second. Okay. There we go. All right, moving on. So we're going to learn about what this change of momentum is shortly. And uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, conceptual example number four. Which has more momentum? A tank that is not moving, an acorn rolling down a hill. C, both have the same amount of momentum. D, impossible to tell. Okay, so you might think that the tank has more momentum because this has so much mass and the acorn just has a tiny bit of mass. But since it's not moving, velocity is zero, meaning momentum is zero. This is moving. So that means there is momentum, even though it just has a tiny amount of mass. So an acre run down the hill will have more momentum. Okay, example number four. A small blue ball of mass 2 kilogram is rolling to the right with a speed of 6 meters per second. A bigger red ball of mass 8 kilograms is rolling to the left with a speed of 4 meters per second. What is the combined momentum of these two objects? Okay. So we're finding the total momentum. A few ways we could do this, but... I'm just, I guess I'm just going to do P blue ball plus P red ball is equal to total momentum. Okay, so momentum of the blue ball is 2 times 6 plus momentum of the red ball is 8 times negative 4 because it's going to the left. So I'm going to put this into my calculator and I get negative. 20 kilograms times meter per second. Okay. And this is a good place to say that momentum is a vector. So there is, is things can be negative or positive to imply direction. All right. So next time we're going to be talking a little bit more about collisions and everything uh, with a topic of impulse. So I'm excited to see you guys with that. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.